Welcome to worship with the community of Kilrenny Parish Church. We may not be able to worship in the church at this time, but we can still come together as a worshipping community and give thanks and praise to God. Lord Jesus, you call us to be your people in this place. Give us a sense of your power in our lives, your love in our hearts, and your joy in all we do. Join with us now as we worship you this day. Amen. So the first hymn, if you would like to get a hymn book out and uh, sing along, I'm not going to be the one doing the singing, but you can pause and sing as you wish, is I the Lord of Sea and Sky, hymn 251 in CH4. Assuming you've just spent the last few moments singing to yourself as loudly as you like, because of course you're in your own homes, so you don't have to wear a mask and you don't have to murmur. I hope you enjoyed that beautiful hymn. Let us pray. During this prayer, there are moments of silence in which you can reflect on people who are important to you or to recall certain things in your lives. God of abiding love, present in all our beginnings, acquainted with all our ways, intricately woven into the depths of all things. You understand our thoughts from far off and know our ways intimately. As we gather to worship you, nothing is hidden from you. May we recognise your voice in our midst as we gather to give you thanks and praise. May we relish all the days you have written for us. As we sing, pray and tell our stories, grant that when we come to the end of ourselves, we would find you. Generous God, from our hearts, we thank you. We say thank you for friends and family. Generous God, from our hearts, we thank you. We say thank you for our church and our community. Generous God, from our hearts, we say thank you. We say thank you for your church in the world. Generous God, from our hearts, we thank you. We thank you for the people in our community. Generous God, from our hearts, we thank you. We say thank you for your creation, the world in which we live. Generous God, from our hearts, we thank you. We say thank you for the many ways you touch our lives, for laughter, for conversation, for bird song and frosty mornings, for the people and places in our communities that are important to us. We say thank you for the times of silence and space just to be, for company and chance encounters, for simple things and special moments. Thank you that you are with us in the highs and lows of life when we are busy and when we are still, when we believe with all our hearts and when we are barely hanging on by our fingertips of faith. You create and recreate and knit us together again. And we say thank you for the gift of your love given to us in Christ Jesus. Generous God, from our hearts, we thank you. And now we join our voices together in the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us hear the word of God. Our reading this morning comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 43 to 51. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, come with me. Philip was from Bethsaida, the town where Andrew and Peter lived. Philip found Nathanael and told him, we have found the one whom Moses wrote about in the book of the law and whom the prophets also wrote about. He is Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Nathaniel asked. Come and see, answered Philip. When Jesus saw Nathaniel coming to him, he said about him, here is a real Israelite. There is nothing in, false in him. Nathaniel asked him, how do you know me? Jesus answered, I saw you when you were under the fig tree before Philip called you. Teacher, answered Nathaniel, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus said, do you believe just because I told you I saw you when you were under the fig tree? You will see much greater things than this. And he said to them, I am telling you the truth. You will see heaven open and God's angels going up and coming down on the Son of Man. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, Lord. Amen. Today we take a short digression from the Gospel of Mark into John's Gospel to hear the story of the calling of two of the more enigmatic disciples. Philip and Nathaniel. Philip reappears later in the book of Acts, but Nathaniel is only ever mentioned in John's gospel and then disappears completely from sight. There are two things for us to note about these encounters. Firstly, the immediacy of Philip's call. And secondly, Nathaniel's verification of Jesus as Messiah after his doubts about his origins in Nazareth. Let's take these in turn. Philip is easy to deal with. We don't know much about him, but John tells us he comes from the town of Bethsaida and like Andrew, he sees Jesus and immediately accepts him as the Messiah, the one all faithful Israelites were waiting on. Philip responds to Jesus' call, come with me. In the same way Andrew and Simon Peter had done, his acceptance was immediate, unquestioning, unquestioning and instinctive. Nathaniel is more interesting. When he is told by Philip he's found the Messiah, his first instinct is that of all good country folk. Nothing good comes out of Nazareth. I'm sure many of you can relate to that parochial sense that the neighbouring villages are never as good as the one you come from. Now, I'm not going to get myself into trouble here and cast aspersions on relations between, let's say, Anstruther, Cellar Dyke and Pitt and Weem. But I know that the good folk of Dysart always cast a wary eye on anyone from Galton or from Pathhead in the neighbouring parts of Kirkcaldy. In all the years I've been going to Kirkcaldy, the dividing line between the linked villages in the Langtoon and the former royal borough of Dysart are still as mysterious to me now as they have ever been. Everyone knows when they're in Dysart, but no one can tell you where it starts or ends. Nathaniel displays all the normal prejudices of any villager that they would have about their neighbours. Remember that this is a world full of prophecy. Nazareth was never mentioned as having any connection with the Messiah. 
At this point in our story, Philip could have pleaded with Nathaniel or tried to twist his arm. Say, I found the man. Come and see. Instead, he simply says, come and see for yourself. Jesus immediately spots the nature of Nathaniel's faith and speaks directly to his sense of expectation of the Messiah. Within moments, the doubts are gone. The prejudices have been put to one side and Nathaniel is a convert. Jesus may come from the wrong town, the wrong side of the tracks, but he speaks to Nathaniel in a language he understands. He taps into Nathaniel's expectations and he displays all the attributes Nathaniel is looking for. The sense of calling we see demonstrated in this gospel passage is reflected in the famous Old Testament story of the calling of Samuel. If this were a full-blown service, I would have had an Old Testament reading as a counterpoint to our gospel, just to demonstrate how these two things work. God called young Samuel in a time when the nation of Israel had lost its way. And our reading would have been from 1 Samuel, Samuel chapter 3, a very famous reading, which is reflected in today's hymn, I the Lord of Sea and Sky. Young Samuel had never heard God's voice, but the agent Eli realises what's happening and tells the young boy what to do. All of these callings are important. They tell us about the nature of God's action in the world and how he works with ordinary people like you and like me. The church is once again looking for people who feel God's call to do his work. And sometimes God will speak directly to you. Sometimes it will be an encounter in the street. For me, God's call was more of a gentle, nagging whisper. Something I could ignore for so long, but eventually had to acknowledge and act on. Like so many people involved in the work of the church, we can find it difficult to hear God's voice above the clamour of good works and of service. But if, like Samuel or Philip, we hear that prompting. It can take us in new and unexpected directions. I had no intention or idea that I would ever become a minister of religion. I thought when I answered my call that it was enough to become a reader, to use my gift for talking in that capacity. But God continued to prompt me and push me and take my service further. And now I find myself serving him in the wonderful surroundings of Kilrenny. My journey is not remarkable in any way at all for many people, but for me, absolutely. I would never have thought I would be here today speaking to you like this. So now is a good time to ask yourself, what is God wanting me to do? Has God been quietly nagging me for a long time to take my service forward? Sometimes we have to listen to the inner voice. People often go looking for the loud voice, for that great cry. And yet it's the inner voice, the quiet voice, the quiet voice in the storm that makes the difference. That's the voice we should often be listening for. Sometimes we have to take the chance and respond like Philip, Nathaniel and Samuel. Sometimes we need to step out of our comfort zone and take what the philosopher Soren Kierkegaard said was a leap of faith. We need to stop thinking about what is the right thing to do in the eyes of the world and focus on what is right for God. Our disciples did just that. 
they stepped out of their ordered everyday worlds and followed Jesus. They had expectations of what Jesus would look like, act like, and where they would find him. But he defied all of these and came at the most unexpected moment and in the most unexpected place. We too can still have those encounters with Jesus. If only we open our eyes and our hearts to his prompting and take that leap of faith into a new life with new challenges and new possibilities. When Jesus next asks you to come and follow him, will you turn your back on him and stay in your comfortable life? Or will you say yes and take that leap of faith? Amen. May God add his blessing to these words. If you'd like to take a pause for a few moments, the second hymn is hymn 503 in the hymnal. Take my life and let it be. Our prayers of intercession this morning come from a book by the Reverend David Ogston called Scots Worship for Advent, Christmas and Epiphany. It's a book I've used from time to time over the last few years. It's a rich resource for prayers and other materials, some of which are in the Scots dialect, although not today's. But in particular, it has a wonderful section that I go to from time to time and where this prayer is taken from, and it's called A Quarry of Prayers. So let us pray. O oh Lord, who art the hope of all the ends of the earth. Our fathers and their fathers before them placed their hope and faith in you, and you answered them in their day of trouble for your name's sake. Here is now, O thou preserver of our lives and lover of our souls. O God, have pity on our race. Raise us from the life of tension and care to the life of gladness and trust. Lord, helper of the helpless, remember those in trouble who need rescue and relief from pain, respite from worry and redemption from error. O Lord, who are the shepherd of the church, remember this day all who have believed and grant all believers one heart and one soul. O Lord, the giver and sustainer, strengthen the weak and reassure the faithful and halt the careless in their hurry to go adrift. Lord of Lord, ruler of rulers, speak powerfully and with persuasion to all rulers that may, they may be ashamed of any loss of truth or loss of reason or loss of honour. Grant our farmers good seasons and kind weather. Grant our fishermen fair skies and rich waters. Give honesty and just dealing to all who trade in coins, ideas, words and pictures and watch over all our bargains, unless we be deceived. Lord, help us to love those who love us. Help us to pray for those who are too busy to pray. Lord, help us to be true to Jesus Christ for the sake of those who have no time for him, no sorrow for his cross, no joy in his redemption. Lord, help us to be like Christ for all his people here in this place and everywhere. Amen. Now go in peace. May this day, this year, unfold as it should. May you find solace in scripture and spirit. May you find your journey in this new year be filled with hope and the promise of God for the sake and the peace of the world. Amen. <laughs>